Hello, and welcome back to another Dreams devlog style video. Um, I've been a little bit away from Dreams for the past week or so since the new Avengers game came out and the uh, Tony Hawk Pro Skater 1 and 2 remake. Uh, but before that happened, I had started dabbling in some new stuff. Um, the great thing about Dreams is if you're a, a game designer type person like me, um, you can do anything and it's easy to get inspired or think of other things while you're working on one thing and begin work on something else, uh, which is the case here. Um, while I was working on well, all of my other games, I've had an idea to make sort of a... Uh, like a click and find game, seek and find, um, you know, the, the typical kind of like jumble picture, you've got to find certain items or certain things, uh, with the twist of it being sniping. So sort of a snipe and seek, if you will, um, with the goal being to obtain a list of targets and then clear the level, um, getting other points, and having your time be uh, the key here, so you, you know, it's a leaderboard type game, getting, not just getting the uh, targets on the list, but doing it in the fastest time, and so, since the other games I was working on are basically in playable condition, uh, with just, you know, minimal additions and updates needed, uh, I started messing with this uh, you might notice that I'm using a lot of the uh, same assets that I've used before like I, I just use my zombies from the little dead game because they work for what I want so you know why not just throw them in plus while I was playing that game I kept wanting to snipe them anyway so why not do that while I'm also trying to make something else um, as far as the sniping and the gun mechanic go i literally just looked it up first on the dreams uh universe or dreamiverse and i found somebody who had made a plug and play sniping uh mechanic it was a gun and it shot and it sniped and zoomed in so did everything i wanted did it with the same buttons i was going to use anyway saved me a lot of work and it's not an important element of the game so and I can always change the models or do anything I want to adjust it later. Uh, the targets there, I've uh, literally just typed the targets and I found some dynamic, a set of dynamic targets that I used as a template um, to accomplish basically what I was, uh, what I had in mind. I mean, there the group of targets I found was a group of four different types of targets. Uh, that do different things. One acts like a switch. Uh, one changes colors and holds that for a few seconds, effectively acting like a switch that holds something on for a few seconds and then off, um, which you could be used to, um, you know, if you were to tag them in a way or logic them in a way so that, like, let's say you had to shoot two things at the same within a time period to activate you know something on the list uh, that's the way you could use that so you have to shoot one thing it's on for a couple seconds you have to find the other thing shoot it it's on if they're both on at the same time boom it activates the uh, check mark or whatever it is in your case but it, for me I was going for like I said a snipe sneak and find click click and find type deal um, but it's also just fun to do this uh, just sniping the zombies was fun, so that's where it started. The city that I'm using was literally somebody's asset they built. It was a very small, very cheap, uh, tiny version of a city. I just blew it up, you know, with the resize, and it works for what I need because the important thing is not, you know, the details or anything of the city. It's just the feeling of it. You're just standing in one spot. And then from there, I will begin... Uh, building out the city, adding, you know, non-target cars, characters, things like that to throw you off from just being able to seek and find targets. Uh, right now, obviously, I'm just putting the targets in, so 
you know, that's all there is. You don't get a real feel or sense of what the actual gameplay would be like. Uh, but this all came from me just having ideas in my head and wanting to do something like this. Uh, I've played a few of the sniping type games on Dreams, and there are actually some pretty similar ideas to what I wanted to do. So, you know, and that's okay. The great thing about Dreams is that it's for everyone, and we all have our own ideas about how games work and what they should be. Uh, look at how many first-person shooters there are, how many platformers there are, how many RPGs and puzzler games there are. There's everybody's got their idea for what, should, how it should be, or they're just I, their own idea of what would be fun to them, and that's that's how it works. And Dreams is great for that because even if you see something that is close to your own idea. You know, instead of being discouraged, you should really just be encouraged to do your thing, too, because they can both exist within the same, I hate to say it, or maybe I don't hate to say it, but in the same dream of Earth. Uh, that's basically the point of dreams. Um, you'll see a lot of logic going on. Uh, the system I had going right there behind me, or behind a, on the screen here. Uh, I'm working on a way of tagging when the targets are hit, it powers them on, and then when all of those things are on, it will, you know, end the game. However, I'm trying to create it in a more dynamic way, so uh, when I get to creating the, the actual, some of the targets, you'll see what I mean. I'm trying to use the randomization to make it to where each time it loads, the targets contain the list so the list will build itself based on what targets appear and then that way each game will be kind of uh i don't know how to put that it'll automatically create itself instead of me having to just make a pre-programmed list of you know targets and levels i want it to be a little bit more dynamic and open so it's not you know it feels fresh uh I, this way that you see is not the proper way to do that. I'm just, I was just like, I'm working through it. Um, and in fact, I still have not figured out the best way to do that. Uh, I'm working on that. But like I said, I've kind of stepped away from dreams for just a, a, a little bit, uh, while I'm playing some actual games. Uh, I don't want to say I burnt myself out or anything, but I made, you know, about four, pretty much four uh, heavy duty, or at least heavy duty for me, uh, games in the last, you know, month and a half, two months. And that's all I've been doing. I haven't touched any other games or anything. Uh, and that's how I operate. I'm like a rocket. I will get obsessed with something and just full steam burn until I run out of fuel. But right now I'm just in a refueling process. So I'm playing some Tony Hawk and some Marvel's Avengers and uh, thinking about what I'm doing next. I'm always thinking about the dreams. Like, I don't know about any of you guys, but to me, it's just always been in my head. So it's, it's part of me. Dreams just gave me an outlet for it and I will not be able to stay away from it for long. Um, but I wanted to make another devlog type video just about the games in general and dreams in general. And in this case, you know, something else I've been working on. It's not a preview. It's not a trailer. This isn't even meant to be anything big. It's just a little side game, kind of like the ball blaster game I made. Um, I'm also dabbling with something else uh, in dreams. I had an idea for sort of like a game where you control a paper airplane using the motion controls and you have to get through obstacles. I was kind of inspired by that uh, internet video of the paper airplane flying through the uh, soccer stadium, I believe it is. And it makes it all the way from the top of the bleachers, all the way, or the top of the stands, whatever you want to call it, uh, all the way down to the field and hits a player. And I was like, oh, that would be fun to control something like that. So I've been working on uh, mimicking uh, that sort of thing with controls and then making the motion controls work. 
I haven't looked it up yet, actually. Uh, maybe I should to see if somebody's made something like that already. I do like to try to do things on my own, even though it is so much easier to just grab things that somebody's already made, because that's what it's there for. And if you can save yourself the work and then focus on other elements like gameplay and things like that, you know, that's 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 better. That's the way it goes. I mean, Dreams itself is that's, it's the best tool. It's like having a game development company that you never have to talk to anybody. There's no ego between, you know, departments or artists or any of that. You just, you get to go, I need this. You look it up. You find it is either the exact thing you wanted or something close enough. You don't have to tell that person, hey, man, this is really close, but can you change this and this? No, you just take it and you change it. Make it what you want it to be. If it doesn't exist, make it from scratch. You know, it's it's just the greatest sort of tool. And it's really sad that it's actually just a toy, basically. It's a toy box. We can't really publish these these things um i mean obviously we can showcase them you you can use them to build i'm sure some kind of following uh for your game design but for the most part it's it's the greatest tool for game designers yet it's just a toy box right now um i see a lot of chatter about whether it's going to make survive over to ps5 and things like that uh why would it not They've already said that they're basically it's going to support everything PS4 does. It's just going to be a better upgraded system. I mean, so why would it not? Um, as far as whether they would allow more uh, thermo or things like that or upgrade things on the Dreams side of things. I mean, that's up to Media Molecule. Uh, you don't... If you don't understand how... The, like why they have the limitations they do when it comes to thermo um, it's not because of the PlayStation 4 necessarily it has more to do with the way that games work and the amount of RAM that the engine takes up and things like that um, I don't know how this engine works on the technical side so maybe it would be maybe it is just as easy as them saying okay we can allow you to have more uh, but it might also take more uh, programming and changes behind the scenes. And if that's the case, then it's entirely up to Media Molecule whether or not they want to invest in that. Uh, otherwise, as is, the game's going to be on PS5. As is, it's going to be there. Your game saves, your files, all that will be fine, I'm sure of it. Um, but that's just uh, that's just a side rant about that discussion I've been hearing online. Um, but I wouldn't worry about any of that. Just keep creating, keep making stuff. You're not going to like, it's not going to go anywhere. Besides the PlayStation 5, it'll be great, but it's going to be, you know, it's going to be a year or two before it really makes a shift over to that from the PlayStation 4. The PlayStation 4 fan base or player base is pretty solid and large, and I find it hard to believe that uh, a significant amount of them will be switching over immediately. And even if they do, the guarantee of PlayStation 4 backwards compatibility tells me that it's going to be no different. It's just going to be like updating your PlayStation. And then when the new games and new stuff starts coming out, you'll be able to play it. So keep, keep dreaming, keep creating. Don't worry about all that stuff. Um, Otherwise, uh, as you can see, I got a lot of work to do on this. I've got uh, some great ideas. I will keep tweaking it and keep messing with it. And uh, it'll probably, I don't know, it might turn into something else. I might find that I need to control the list situation. I'm running into problems with that. But that's my favorite thing about this whole process is just creating a problem for myself and then solving it. That's what logic is. That's what, you know. Really, that's what game design in general is. It's creating a problem for yourself and solving it. You're wanting to make a game and you go, okay, well, that's my problem. I want this game. How do I make it? And then you just go through the list. Uh, I've touched on that in many of my other videos. Um, it's, 
I feel like there's a lot of repetition that is involved when it comes to, to discussing these things, but I mean, that's just the way it is. It, there's a lot of things that are universally, um, sort of universal rules, you know, to design. So, um, but here I began work on my targets. Uh, one of the targets that I wanted to make was um, a person smoking a cigarette. Uh, I used to play Hitman a lot, so I'm kind of inspired by the Hitman games to make sort of a more arcadey fun game. sniping challenge, but there's usually some sort of like, oh, this guy's smoking a cigarette. Your target is smoking a cigarette, and then you gotta find him. So I figured I would add some element like that. It's easy to put uh, somebody like that into a crowd or into a city setting and then have that blend in. So that's where I'm starting here. As you can see, I was just making a cheap, easy to sculpt cigarette. Uh, I, I could probably make it in a cheaper way than I did, but this is what I could think of how to do it. So I did it this way. Uh, the cherry on the end of it, that's just a smaller piece of the uh, cylinder. And then I changed the inner glow and color and the outer glow, or the outer color. And then I made it to where the flex are loose and it gives it that look of having a glowing cherry on the inside. So as you can see, it's pretty simple to just, you know, grab a few things, stretch them around, change colors, add them together, boom, you've got an object. Um, I could probably do a few tutorials, but there's plenty of them out there. Uh, it's all about your grasp of how things work. I would suggest in a lot of cases, you want to switch between using precision movement and free movement. Um, and then it also depends on what you're doing. Like this is a case where I wanted to use precision to get up close and then use the free movement to get it just right. Uh, and then when it comes to the free movement, you want to take advantage of the pressure of the triggers because the, uh, how do you say this? I guess the harder you pull the trigger, the more fluid and harder you grab things. But if you use it just a little bit then you get that more precise slow movement um a lot of people i mean you you, you learn it if you play the, through the tutorials and th things like that but uh you may not fully grasp it but uh just barely pulling the trigger is the best way to go when you're trying to make really good precision movements as you can see here it's just like slightly off i don't know if you can notice that to me it looks like it's just slightly off uh, and as you can see, I was already in the hand at this point, so I kind of messed up there. You really want to do all your sculpting outside of any other objects. And then, unless it's going to be part of that object intrinsically, this is not. It's meant to be an, something I could turn on and off. Uh, because I'm using the randomization technique to put a few things onto one character uh, that can be randomized such as the cigarette and smoking or he can also as you'll see um or well i i'm not going to cover the second part as closely as i did on this but i also created a coffee drinking version of the guy so he's got a coffee cu cup in his hand and he's drinking and what i did was basically use the well I mean, I did use the same exact animation and everything. I just turned the cigarette off, put the cup in this right position, um, and then adjusted the hand for that animation. I adjust the keyframes uh, for the specific things where they were different, like obviously drinking a, out of a cup and smoking a cigarette would be different actions up until, up, you know, when it gets to your face, it's a different action. So I had to adjust the position of the hands in those keyframes, but very simple stuff. Uh, if you have any experience with these things, then it, you're going to find it, you know, you, you'll know what I'm talking about. Uh, if not, then basically it's just that whenever 
you use reuse an animation uh, and you're finding that there are issues with the keyframe or with uh, positions of things you just go into those keyframes and change that thing that is wrong uh, which is what I did to make the coffee drinking version uh, but the plan is to have a few different civilian type targets <clears throat> with different color variations of their clothing styles things like that and then a few different types of targets like six like the cigarette smoking man the man with the coffee uh, i was going to do like a you know the guy walking uh, his dog things like that um there are plans to do like i was saying with the targets that act like switches you could i can do you know something where you have to shoot one thing to make something else happen and then you have to shoot another thing at the you know within a time limit to reveal the target you're trying to hit if that makes sense so some targets will just be walking around doing things whereas harder targets will be require you to kind of solve a, a shooting puzzle if you will uh you know, I'm just combining shooting, game, sniping, puzzle solving, you know, click and find adventure, all of that together to make my own little idea of, of what would be fun. And in the end, that is the key to dreams and game design. And once again, dreams gives you the ability to just play around, to literally just, if you're inclined to do so try whatever you want so if you're still watching at this point i appreciate it uh you know i love you guys and uh keep dreaming keep creating if you have any questions in detail or you need uh you're stuck on something or anything like that always feel free like i say to uh comment down in the comments and i usually respond i'll try to help you out or give you any suggestions that i might have uh otherwise like I said, keep dreaming, keep creating. Alright, love you guys, bye!